So hi, I'm Lizzie Elmer and I am a second year astronomy PhD and I'm looking at variability of AGN, so black holes essentially. But Nottingham was an interesting one because I looked at five universities in the June of that year when you're going around all the universities and I hated one of them. I went round, I was like, I could not live here. And it's one of those things, you just get that feeling. There's no logic behind that feeling. So then in September, I was like, right, I need to go look at another university. And originally Nottingham hadn't been on my list because my parents met here. Me and my sisters all struck it off our list of like, that's mum and dad's place, so we're not gonna look. And then I think mum and dad just went, you should go look, because I think we, we think it will suit you. Just go have a look at it. And I went to all of my open days by myself, so it wasn't like they were here. Um, and I came up here and I was walking around campus and I was just like, yes. It was a beautifully sunny day and I was walking around campus and this campus is just beautiful. You can't not love it when you're walking around this campus because it's so green and it's so lovely. And it was September, so it was all green from the summer. And I remember walking down by Highfields Lake and walking around to find um, Willoughby, which is where my parents had met. And I just kind of went, this works. And then when I came back for the UCAS day, um, I was choosing at that point between which ones to put second. But I found when I came here for the UCAS day, they really integrate you into or it feels like you're part of the department for a day and they made sure they showed you everything and you got to know the students and everyone was like talking really freely and I just got the right feeling I just got the right feeling from here I was just like yes I could live here for four years I could do that I was miserable when I got to Nottingham my first week I'd come to Nottingham thinking yeah I've never really done the drinking thing I'm gonna go to uni and I'm gonna go mad in freshers and I got here and went I don't want to get drunk with these people that I don't know but I made myself stay I think that's what made me overcome that I made myself like my parents came up and saw me in my second weekend for a day and that was really nice because I got the home reassurance but I didn't go home for the first four or five weeks and I made sure I didn't, and I think that's what made me settle in, because then by the time I went home, I'd actually settled in with a group of friends, and I hadn't been going home at the weekends, which meant I'd had to find people to go do things with. And I had the Archery Beginners course, which was running at the weekends as well, so I didn't want to miss too much of that. So I guess I just got a bit too involved in uni life quite quickly. I actually went round in circles on a lot of things when I was at school, so I started off in year seven, doing like this extracurricular project in astronomy because I got a telescope and that was the kind of cool kid I was that so I went and did an extracurricular um, project in astronomy that I got like a commendation for and everything um, but then I think I went through like I decided I wanted to be an architect but I can't draw so that didn't go very well um, and then I think I went through like um, geographer and geophysics and then I got back around to physics and went but that one, because I'd realised I was looking at all the geophysics courses going, oh, that module's interesting, that module's interesting, and realised they were all the physics modules. <laughs> the stuff in Australia was really cool. So I did the internship in Aust I did an internship in Sydney uh, in the summer after my third year at uni. I got this internship at a company out in Sydney, which is unfortunately no longer exists, which is really sad. But um, I went out there, so I lived out in Sydney for three months. Basically, I was working on this bit of code that would make the telescope be able to change what it was looking at really quickly. So that if something happened, then you could kind of send a thing to the telescope and go, I want it to look this way, and it would look within like a couple of minutes. So when I first got the message through about this project, they put in like for a gravitational wave event if that happened. And then I spoke to my supervisors on Skype at 10 p.m. because Australia and England trying to do time difference is fun. Um, and they were like, yeah, no, we were being a bit ambitious, like that's no way gonna happen. It's probably gonna be like supernovas and that kind of stuff. So I wrote all this code while I was out there and tested it all and everyone was really happy with it. And we knew it worked. Um, and then I got an email about a year after I got back being like, we've actually used it on its first proper target and it's something really, really exciting. And it was an email that had gone to the whole, um, the whole department where I was. And so they were like, but we can't tell you what it is. <laughs> So I was there like, okay, I have no idea what this is. And then I got copied in on some emails that were actually about the actual event. And it was the um, electromagnetic counterpart to the gravitational waves that they found. Um, and I was just there like, oh my God, this is absolutely amazing. And I'm not really supposed to tell anyone that this has happened. So I emailed my supervisor being like, is this the thing? And he was like, yeah, no, it's the thing. 
and, and it was just like yeah we um so my code was actually used a couple of weeks after when it was starting to get too faint um and they wanted to um, look at the spectra of it as it kind of decayed away uh, so mine was used then um so it was a couple of weeks after well it was a week after i think um, so I was just yeah and then he just went oh yeah and by the way your name's on this paper and this paper and it was just and it was a paper about the australian um contribution to it and a, the main gravitational waves paper so i got very very overexcited so i started archery when i came to uni which was just a it had been in so many films i think in the run-up to me coming to uni that i was just like i want to try this and it's really cheap to start at uni um, so I tried it and then it turned out I could do it and then last year I got into the top eight at the student nationals and that was just like oh my god I'm actually okay at this. So it's really good for mental health I find so I've got um, not anything officially diagnosed but I get really anxious about things um, just all the time but archery is really affected by if you're thinking about if you're overthinking it it's all going to go wrong so it's a really good training for my head that I know when I'm going and shooting and I walk up to the line that that's all I'm thinking about is my archery and even if I do a bad shot you have to like just block it out of your head and carry on with the shot and not mess up the next one just because you messed up the one before. I think sport's amazing. I do and I would have hated myself at school if I'd said that because um, I hated school sport with a passion but I love having somewhere that's completely separate from my work and I just go and, and do it and it's fun and the people are great as well. We have such a laugh.